Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. I hope you like live dyno graphing, and we've done this once for Milwaukee Tools. People often tell us how useful that is. And now we've bought and tested just about every DeWalt Impact that they sell, and you can see them all compared right here. So if you're in the market, you're in the right place, and we've got everything from a few impact drivers to their new versus old mid torques and high torques, as well as a ludicrous torque impact that's not even out yet at the time of this video. And if you're sort of just questioning which impact you really need, or really batteries you may need, and we'll get into that as well, we have a scale based on our numbers these measure at, not the ones on the box, that should help you make a decision as to what impact or impacts you'll need and for what. Links to all of these tools below. Let's jump in with DeWalt's latest impact driver at the moment, the DCF845. Now DeWalt currently sells a lot of impact drivers and many of them are rated at the same power, so we'll do a couple of these first. These can be useful for guys like us on top of engine type things with lots of small bolts in a row, and these days a growing number of stuff really with how powerful these have become. Impact driver tests go up to 10 seconds, so here's that. One hundred and sixty one foot pounds. So what is that good for? Well, on our scale, we'll list applications that each torque level can remove those types of things 90 plus percent of the time. Now, can an impact driver remove lug nuts? Yes, but should you buy one for that task? No, as it sure as heck won't remove 90 plus percent of them out there, perhaps leaving you stranded if you don't have the right tools for the job. But 161 is certainly good enough for 90 plus percent of valve covers as well as other front engine accessories too. We're talking water pumps, alternator, the majority of power steering pumps, and most non-safety related interior fasteners for that matter as well. But that's not DeWalt's only offering in impact drivers and the next newest design from Team Yellow is the DCF850 Atomic, which is about as micro as an impact driver gets. The size of this thing makes it super useful on vehicles we find as these tools already need some type of adapter out front to run sockets, so cutting down on that length is mighty handy. You might not have cars in mind when we were looking at tools like this, so we're going to include the Atomic's forward torque here as well, as that last driver is already showing its best numbers in reverse. So overall, the smaller DCF850 Atomic beats the DCF845XR because the Waltz naming and model numbers often don't make a lot of sense, you'll come to find. That 167 to 177 still puts this tool where the last one was as far as what you'd be using it on though, fits in about here. Okay, next up, to step into impact wrenches now with the DCF901 12 volt extreme compact impact and the DCF911 20 volt based on the same design, just using separate higher voltage batteries. Both these tools are very similar on the inside, so perform similarly, and we're grouping them together on screen accordingly with their respective five amp hour batteries that we use for these tests. Now in wrenches, we test up to 15 seconds, but you'll see the differences on the curve with those impact drivers. Two hundred and fifty nine and two hundred and seventy four foot pounds, which is very good. Milwaukee's M12 and M18 compacts make about 250 for reference. So the question is, can they do lug nuts? Well, we maintain that this 300 mark is the responsible benchmark for new, well maintained looking lug nuts. That said, when these came out, I used the heck out of them and that included probably a few hundred lug nuts. But the odd lug nut here or there with the 150 to 160 spec ugga dugga on by the last guy, who knows how long ago. This is not the one-stop shop and won't do everything, but it is very capable. The next impact, which came out later, is about as close as a compact cordless gets to filling all the boxes. The DCF921, this was sort of a radical design and like the DCF850 driver, is somehow both shorter and more powerful. This comes in 3 8 but makes the same exact power in 3 8 and half inch. The last two impacts do as well. And this is that power. Three 
319 foot-pounds, incredibly impressive, and this is perhaps the best all-around compact cordless impact on sale right now. I've even seen a coworker who was mainly a Milwaukee guy with one of these on his roll cart now, and it makes sense, same size and price as the M18, but 20 to 25% more power. This puts it over the threshold here, and realistically, it's done a lot of brakes and even some axle nuts as well, just maybe won't do all those applications 90 plus percent of the time, regardless of size and condition you find them in. What can do most of those things, assuming you can fit it around those brakes, is this, DeWalt's classic DCF894 mid-torque, one of the tools that define the original category of mid-torques. Not new by any means, but has certainly earned its reputation as a hard worker, and a modest one at that, this model only claims to make 330 foot-pounds, and yet this is what it can do. Three hundred and sixty-three foot-pounds, so more than advertised, but compared to the latest, greatest compacts coming out of DeWalt, not a lot more for this size increase. These models are still selling on shelves, but a better investment would be spending a few more dollars on one of these. Their latest DCF891, which in typical DeWalt confusion is a lower model number but higher torque, later model, a lot higher torque too. Advertised torque goes from 330 to 600 when we're talking comparable tightening torque. Nearly indistinguishable in appearance though, so make sure you're finding the right one when you walk up to the register, but boy does it have all new internals. Take a look at this. Six hundred and twenty. We're nearly doubling everything else from the yellow brand up until now with this tool. It's massively impressive and the most powerful mid-torque you can buy on the market right now, a total beast. Unsurprisingly, this opens up a lot of applications that won't be a problem for you. We're talking most practically all lug nuts now, over tightened by the dealer and rusty swollen lug nuts that the DCF 921 and old 894 can struggle with at times and not remove in some cases. The new 891, I've yet to see a lug nut it can't tackle when we're talking any passenger car or truck. Chassis undercar bolts, yes. Rusted suspension components like leaf spring shackles and also pesky German axle hardware, those two. Even ball joint presses, yes. Heck, it will do large wheel bearings as well, we find. But that has more to do with how long you're willing to listen to a tool impact compared to a high torque. Adding this much capability makes this the widest range tool in the yellow arsenal when we're talking applications added or lost by choosing one impact over another. The only way forward from here is high torques. This is the classic DCF899 high torque. It's a bit long in the tooth now, but has earned a reputation among DeWalt fans. Here's how it does versus the mids and compacts. Six hundred and twenty-nine, with some differences on the curve along the way as well, but surprisingly close between these two models. Much closer than you expect looking at the size of the tools. DeWalt really has come a long way in the last year or two in this category compared to past models. The way to really make a dent, like everywhere, the rankings, your sockets, is the DCF 900 Stormbringer. Like the mid-torque double Spider-Man situation, this looks a lot like the older DCF 899, but is all new under the hood with a higher power and higher RPM motor and a much heavier hammer. You can see what I mean on screen here. Eight hundred and ninety-five foot-pounds, and these are hard-fought numbers on this channel. No other production half-inch impact has ever made that much, and we've tested over a hundred of them now. She's a handful and can tax your sockets, so make sure you have a good warranty on those. That's only when and if you can come across things that will put up a fight against this tool. 
which looking at our scale of applications here is few. Wheel bearing presses, uh, yeah, like five seconds of impacting. We're now much more able to do rusted chassis and suspension bolts when using extensions and swivels, which we've shown can lose 40 to 60% of your beans when you're using those. People wonder why we need, want torque monsters like this. Go try to remove a 220 foot pound spec upper control arm bolt off of a rusted car with an extension and a swivel. You're gonna have a bad time. On the crank bolts now as well, this tool can certainly tackle those even without a weighted socket and big rig lug nuts such as 33 millimeter hex. Not every rusted example you're gonna find out there of these, which usually requires, we're talking one inch drive, $1,400 cordless impacts, but yeah, a surprising amount of them nonetheless. Now the only impact that can go one step further from here we're talking diesel and farm equipment, is the impact that made us want to finally put this list together as it's even more complete now. The DCF 961, or internally called Project Ludicrous, we don't really know what it's called because we got our hands on one before it was even announced yet, much less on sale. This uses a much larger diameter and heavier hammer with a compound planetary gear, reducing the RPM lower to run it, and that produces brutal hits that, well, yeah, it punches up the numbers. Nine hundred and forty seven foot pounds and we're talking half inch here and a five amp hour XR battery. It's possible this could come out with a three quarter inch anvil, in which case we'll buy that, test it and leave a link below. But it goes without saying if eight ninety five from a DCF 900 was a record, this nine forty seven is even more so. It's heavy, a bit oddly proportioned, but also one of the few all new designs to come out of DeWalt on this end of the impact torque spectrum in the better part of eight years. So pretty sweet. But that's with the five amp hour battery. As I mentioned, we test all these things with that. We have no idea what this will come with. So let's take a look at how the tools that do benefit from larger, higher tech battery packs perform with a few of those. Now, batteries aren't a solve all solution. They don't always make more or noticeably more on every tool but might be a way to make your existing tools more capable in some cases. Our first recommendation would be the six amp hour XR battery featuring 21700 cells. It both costs less than the eight amp hour XR battery and makes more power on DeWalt tools than that as well. On every DeWalt that we've ever tested, drills, cutoff tools, everything. This takes a DCF 899 high torque up from 629 foot pounds to 662. And on the DCF 891 new mid torque, it goes from making 620 up to 649 foot pounds. This means the new mid torque with a six amp hour battery can be roughly as capable or more than the 899 high torque using a regular five amp hour. That's nuts. The DCF 900 missile silo looking tool goes from an already bonkers 895 foot pounds to 936. And the unreleased Project Ludicrous goes from 947 to 976. Smaller tools than these can see some gains sometimes, but often it's not really worth it. On those tools, maybe consider the standard power stack, which makes the same power we find as a 5 amp hour XR, but much smaller and lighter. But they do also make a 5 amp hour power stack as well. That would be our next suggestion. It also brings the beans for a bit less weight. In most cases, it performs similarly to the six amp hour XR, which is to say performs very well. And in a few cases like this DCF 899, it sees an increase from 629 to 662 and 670 here. And also we saw an increase with the DCF 961 unreleased tool from 976 to 985 from the six to the power stack. The only steps up from there you'll find lie in the 9 amp hour flexible battery because it basically has three rows of what you will find in the 6 amp hour having two rows of. And the massive 15 amp hour flexible, which about matches the 9 amp hour here, sometimes even less, due to just having a gaggle of 18650s inside. Now I hope you found this helpful. There's links to most of these tools below. Thanks for watching.